Welcome back to our programming 101. We're talking about ggplot, how to do data visualization using the grammar of graphics, right? This idea that we define the data, we define the mapping, we define the geometry, and we create layer upon layer of beautiful graphs. You're gonna learn all about that in this video. Uh, this video is a continuation of a series that I'm doing, right? So if you followed the last two videos, I'll quickly recap. We've been looking at how to use ggplot in a particular data set, it's a lovely data set, it's called M-Sleep, it's Mammals Sleeping Habits. The lovely thing about this particular data set, two things. Firstly, you have access to it, right? So you can do everything that I'm gonna do in this video, you can do at home, you've got access to this data set that's built into R, it's right there. Secondly, the nice thing about this data set is it has multiple different kinds of variables. So you can use it to practice different kinds of plots, plotting, a single categorical or a single numeric or a single or a categorical and a numeric variable, etc. etc. So that's what we're working through. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Let's just go to the top, and today we're going to be looking at two or more numerics. Right, two or more numeric variables. We're gonna talk about the plot that I've got on the screen now, how I did that and why I did the things that I did to get that. And I want you to practice at home and try and do as good or better job of visualizing this particular data set in that sense. Let's go right to the top of this code. And I just wanna always say, we're working in the tidyverse. Install packages, tidyverse. Then every time you use it, library, tidyverse. The tidyverse is a collection of packages, one of which is ggplot, but it's got other packages and it is without question, the best way to manipulate and visualize your graphic. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch previous videos that I've done because I don't want to get into that right now. But always, we start off library, tidyverse. That's where we are. Now, if you push data, open, close brackets, you can see all of the different data sets that are built into R. I'm not going to get into that right now, but one of them is M sleep. Firstly, question mark M sleep. If you go down to the bottom on the right, it's going to give you information about this data set, including a little description about the various variables. If you do view and sleep, you're going to see what the data set looks like. And as I said, there are multiple different kinds of variables, which is great. There's numeric and categorical. There are other kinds of variables. We're going to talk about that in different in other videos, like there's time series analysis, et cetera, et cetera. We're not going to talk about that in this video. For the most part, if you really want to get into data visualization, get your head around how to deal with these two types of variables. Numeric, anything that falls anywhere on a number line, and categorical variables where you can put any particular observation into a particular bucket. You know, is this person got blue eyes, green eyes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, those are the kinds of variables we're dealing with. Today, we're gonna to be talking about multiple numeric variables. In other words, things that fall on a number line. We're gonna look at body weight, brain weight, okay, and we're gonna plot these things against each other, time spent awake, and total time spent asleep. These are four, they're all numeric variables, not categorical, okay. So let's get right into that. Just a quick summary. We've already talked about a single categorical variable and I'll just run that code and you'll notice a single categorical variable. We count up the number of observations, we get a lovely bar chart. If we look at a single numeric variable, we create bins and we count up the number of observations in any given bin and we create a histogram. Now we're gonna look at multiple numeric variables, right? And here's some code and I'm just gonna walk you through what I've done here quite quickly and, and you'll see none of this is complicated. First of all, you know if you've watched any of my videos when we're dealing with ggplot, I like to pipe the data in using these pipe operators. And the reason is before the data even gets into ggplot, we can be applying filters and we can remove missing values. There's all sorts of things we can do to the data that gets piped in and, and we, can, we can change those parameters as they get piped into ggplot, right? How pipes work, anything on the left-hand side of a pipe gets piped into the next line and it is by default the first argument in the next function, right? So when we get to ggplot, ordinarily we would type ggplot open brackets data equals M sleep. We don't need to do that. We're piping M sleep in. ggplot knows that the data set it's working with is M sleep. Then we don't need to type in mapping equals aesthetic. It's a given, but just to let you know, that's what we're doing. And then within the aesthetic brackets, we've got the variables that we're going to be using. Now, just a quick summary for those of you that haven't been watching the ggplot series. We define the data set that we're using, right? We either type in after ggplot data equals 
in sleep, whatever, or we pipe it in. By one way or the next, you tell ggplot what data set to use. The next thing is mapping, right? Now here's where we say to ggplot, we've got a series of variables that we're gonna use, and we want these things to map out against different visual characteristics on our canvas, right? It might be we want this variable to map out against color. So as the variable changes across our observations, the data points on the canvas must correspondingly change, have a commensurate change in color or change in size or change in shape or map out against the X axis or the Y axis. So we're telling R which variables need to map out against which visual characteristics on the canvas. So that's the aesthetic. Then after that, we always talk about the geometries and that could be geom point if we want dots, geom histogram if you want a histogram, et cetera, et cetera. Geom just means what kind of geometry do we want to use? Right, right, that's just by way of summary. I know those of you that are familiar with ggpot, that's a little bit boring that I go over it, but it's important that we get that right. Now, let's talk about what we've got in here. We've got ggplot, we know that the data we're working with is msleep, we're saying aesthetic, this is the mapping. The first argument is always the x, uh, the x axis, the second argument is the y axis. We can add in other arguments after that if we want. We could say color, size, shape, et cetera, et cetera, here. But the first and the second are the x and the y axes. Okay, if we did nothing else here, right, let's just do that. If I just took away that plus sign so it's not gonna carry on running the code, but I just ran that line of code, it's gonna create a canvas with nothing on it because we haven't included any geometries, We've, but it's creating the canvas, right, with the X and the Y coordinates nicely defined. X and Y axis is defined by the variables that we've identified, right. Then we start getting into the geometry. Right, and here you'll see we've done two things. We've got geom point and geom smooth. These are two layers. I'm gonna remove the geom smooth for now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take that away. Well, you know, a better way to do this would be to put a little hashtag in front of the geom smooth, which means R won't read that line of code. Okay, and if I run our code now, it's just, it's gonna ignore the geom smooth and it's gonna do the dots. I also want to come back to this. I'm gonna come back to this aesthetic. Let's build this up one at a time. So color equals total sleep and size equals awake. We're gonna, do, we're gonna bring that back. If we just did geom point, it's going to say, okay, we've got an X and Y axis and it's creating a dot at every point. Every row of data has a body weight and a brain weight and it's creating a dot in the corresponding places on this Cartesian plane. Now, we've said that, okay, well, we can layer up on top of that a geom smooth, which is basically a smooth linear model with a standard error around it. And we've got that now being mapped on top of that so we can see the sort of shape of the data. That's kind of quite interesting. And we've spoken now about the fact that, hang on, we might want to communicate other information about our data set on the same canvas. How might we do that? Well, we've got these two additional numeric variables, right? They're continuous numeric variables. We've got time spent awake and time on, and total sleep. We could map them against color and size. Those are two common things to do. If we could, of course, stick that up here in the aesthetic, but because we might only want that mapping to pertain to the dots, we don't want it to pertain to every single layer of our plot. We can also do an aesthetic inside this particular uh, geometry. Right, so here we do... Uh, color, and you can spell it C-O-L-O-R-O-O-U-R, -O -O both will work, equals, if you forget the name of a variable, you can always type in names and the data set, and that's gonna tell you it is but, but, but sleep total. So I had it wrong, it's not total sleep, it's sleep total, and so it's quite a good idea sometimes to just cut and paste it, it'll make it right, comma, next line, and then we'll say size, is equal to awake. All right, now if we run this, those two characteristics should pop up onto our graph. There we go. And now you'll notice that because these are continuous variables, the color is anywhere between the, the beginning and the end of things. The same applies to the size, but it's just shown us certain cut points within that. But these are both continuous numeric variables. The size and the color of each data point is now a function of total sleep and total time awake. And the point on the Cartesian plane is the, a function of body weight and brain weight. And the fact of the matter is that we can see that there's some 
element of a relationship between body weight and brain weight. We would have expected that to be the case. If we want to see this, this geome smooth, we could say method is equal to linear model, and that's going to give us the least squared line, right? So that's, and then we could, if we wanted to, of course, we could say standard error is equal to false, and it's going to take away, let's just see. So there we go. So that's kind of a, a nice little plot. Just to get back here, I've, I've put in a filter body weight is less than two. You might be wondering why I did that. I mean, firstly, I wanted to illustrate the fact that you can, when you're piping your data into your GP plot, you can apply these filters. And why that's important, let's say, for example, we didn't do that. Let's take that away. Let's put a hashtag in front of that and run the code without the filter. And we get something that's a little bit odd. And what you can see here is almost all of our data points are right down here. And this is because we're dealing with mammals and most mammals are sort of less than two kilograms. You know, there's thousands of mammals that are like these tiny little critters running around. And then all the way out here, you've got like the blue whale, that's like six and a half tons or whatever. And this, you know, this, this might be a big elephant or something, but these data points are skewing the entire data set. In actual fact, if we want to really have a look at the data, we want to kind of focus in there. It's easier just to filter out those outliers. I just chose two. You could be a little bit more scientific and find out where the right place to filter it would be. Another way you can deal with skewed data is to take the log of the data that's skewed. But that's a whole different discussion. We'll get into that some other time. I hope you found this useful. Stay and watch another video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make a comment below. I'll try and respond to all of the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Take care.